In this video, I'm going to recap the <clears throat> MES price action for Friday, January the 19th, 2024. Uh, today was a big a big day. There was a new, new all-time high on the S&P 500. Uh, it was a very bad day for me, but um, that's because I wasn't implementing proper risk management. I over leveraged and I got what was coming to me. And guys, if you over leverage, if you don't implement the 2% rule, if you are not managing your money, if you don't go into the marketplace with a game plan, you're going to end up like me. You're going to end up with big losses. You're going to end up blowing your account. You're going to end up blowing multiple accounts. I mean, eventually one day, the day has to come where you impl implement the 2% rule. Okay, could be the 1% rule for you, could be the 3% rule. I would recommend no higher than 3%. What do I mean? You must implement a percentage of your account equity that you are willing to risk on your trade, uh, on each and every trade, your stop that you are not going to move, you're not going to widen, um, and so that you can manage your money, guys. If you don't manage your money, you're going to lose it. So with that being said, uh, let me go ahead and review the price action that we had on Friday. Uh, January the 24th and let's start with uh, the electronic trading hours here on the 10 minute chart. So you can see that we started out the new financial day at midnight trading uh, relatively flat um, and then as we went into the London session which opened up at 0200 we had a ranging candle that took us into a new trading range that again took us higher and we ended up uh, trading in the pre-market a little bit lower. Um, as the market opened, we made our low of the day here at 48, 14, spot 50. Uh, the low of the New York the New York session, the financial day started at its low here at 48, 11, spot 50. And then we just went up from there. So in this recap video, I want to keep it uh, relatively short. I want to talk about some of the uh, you know, what if you don't have price action to the left, right? So let's first just take a look at our daily chart. Uh, I neglected to look at the daily chart. So this is where we're sitting. Is this where I expected the market to go? No, I thought the market was going to come back down through these fair value gaps. Uh, so I'll be honest with that. Um, but we ended up we ended up this week with a big fat green candle and we're at all time highs. So it's just very difficult to know where the market's going to stop uh, and turn around at this point. But taking a look at our weekly candle, we did end up with a big fat weekly candle that ended right near its high. Let's see if the thank God it's Friday model worked out. I don't think it did. No, didn't even didn't even really get close. Um, no. No, no. No, thank God it's Friday model. Unfortunately, didn't work out this week. Okay. Um, so if you're sitting in a situation like this where you're in all-time high territory and you don't have any price action to the left, what can you do? Well, the way that you can do this and, and you you know you don't even have to really be at all-time highs to do this but if you're expecting that the market is going to just continue to pump higher you've got to have some logical spot where you think that the market you know could end up turning around and how you do that guys and I've talked about this in prior videos is the standard deviation projection so taking our range here that we made from the pre-market into the uh, AM session of the New York Stock Exchange and taking a uh, measured move. So you can see that it's just a FIB retracement with these FIB levels if you want to copy those. Um, the market ended up moving above one standard deviation of this trading range, which is not a bad way to project out logically where things might go. Um, take a trading range and take a a measured move or standard deviation projection and sometimes it'll turn around at the half standard deviation sometimes on at the one the one and a half the two the the point being is that when the move is over you should see some approximate standard deviation of a prior trading range that the projection uh, turned around so that is that let's look at some of our trading opportunities during the regular trading hours so, 
During the regular trading hours, there were really no opportunities or not a lot of opportunities here to get in on limits. Um, if you're using the regular trading hours and you wanted to have an idea of how far you thought the market could go, um, we could take some of our small trading ranges here and you can see multiple standard deviations higher of our intraday, uh, intraday trading ranges. But other than that, not, not a whole lot. Some of the ICT patterns that I, I see are visible. Let's see if we have any fair value gaps. So here we had a fair value gap. This was what's called a breakaway gap because it stayed open. Um, so if you noticed that, you know, what are some of the ICT teachings that you could have used today? If at some point you notice that this fair value gap was staying open, that was a strong indication that the market was just going to keep ripping higher. Okay, this is also right here. That pattern is called an institutional order flow entry drill. If you're using a 2% stop loss and you'd already seen that the market didn't really have a willingness to go higher, uh, sorry, to go lower, and you know that we're at new all time highs and we were ripping this buy side liquidity, you could have guessed, made a reasonable guess that the market was, was just in a buy model today, okay, just a classic buy model. And taking that assumption into account, if you had noticed that we had a fair value gap here that was staying open, and you had an institutional order flow entry drill, you could have entered long on a market order uh, or on a stop order. But anyways, you could have initiated a long position and then held it for the remainder of the day, and that would have been a profitable trade. So the ICT pattern here I see is the uh, breakaway gap. Let's see if there are any other ICT patterns that I can see. Um, we have an inverted wick here. Or sorry, we have a long wick inefficiency that the market uh, respected and turned around. You can see that. Um, other than that, guys, I, I never really do well with days like this where the market just goes in one direction. I do much better in market play, in the market environment of a trading range. Uh, but that being said, you are going to have times like this where the market just moves up. Uh, it happens. So... What are some of the ICT patterns you could have seen? Well, this breakaway gap right here uh, during the lunch session could have tipped you off that the market was going to keep going higher. Earlier than that, you'll notice that the market uh, briefly dipped into our regular trading hours gap but left the regular trading hours gap open. That could have been a, another sign to you. Uh, finally, you'll see that the... The market was respecting this rejection block here. So here we had a, a gap that remained open. We had the regular trading hours gap that was remaining open. We saw that the market was reject, uh, sorry, respecting this rejection block. And then finally, uh, if you were looking for targets, taking this range as a measured move, that was exactly on our regular trading hours from this low to this high, one and a half standard deviations is exactly where the market ended up closing. Could you have guessed that prior? I probably would have guessed one standard deviation. If we just use the bodies of these candles, see where that takes us, two standard deviations higher. Uh, exactly, just about exact, two, and a, two standard deviations higher. So, um, Anyways, guys, it was just a day that went straight up. There were some ICT patterns like the standard deviation projection, a run on buy side liquidity, as well as a breakaway gap, meaning a fair value gap that stays open. There were a couple of patterns that indicated to you that the, that the market was going to move in that one direction today. Um, I, I hope that I pointed those out to you and that you could see what I was talking about. Um, in addition to that, guys, uh, this is what we refer to here as a low resistance liquidity run price signature. So what do I mean by that? Just no uh, sort of effort or choppiness or back and forth in order to keep running running the market higher. Um, that what we call a low resistance liquidity run or a low, low resistance liquidity signature. Um, and that's worth that's worth noting as well. My prediction going into next week, guys, I mean, I've got to continue predicting that uh, 
that we are going to see a black candle. It's difficult for me to continue saying, hey, the market's just going to keep ripping new all-time highs. It's not really the kind of trader that I am. It's not, it's not my intuition. Um, if, if the market continues to go higher, I guess we could see the, the one standard deviation of this black candle, just using that as a trading range. Let's see what a half standard deviation using the highs and lows. I, I don't think so. Uh, using the candle bodies on the weekly chart. We've already passed the half standard deviation projection. So it's difficult for me to say. Um, I, I would continue to guess that the market's going to turn around at some point. Okay, But this is why you implement risk management. This is why you implement the 2% rule because you really don't know. Um, you're just taking educated guesses. So with that being said, guys, that is the price action recap for our all-time highs on the MES Friday, January the 19th. We had a breakaway gap. We had a, a standard deviation projection, and we had a low, uh, low resistance liquidity run signature. Those are some of the ICT patterns that I see in the market today. Let me know in the comments below if you saw any other patterns. Um, my referral links are in the description box below. Thank you.